Select the team you want to join. Start your seat.
Correct. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Just as we were ready for air, it was the Colts emerging from the locker room to great fanfare here in Indy. They're ready to go as the Colts get set to match up with the Minnesota Vikings. To kick off for Indianapolis. Two clubs here, each looking to rebound from a week one loss as we're underway on EA Sports. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. Space there for Cook that time as he winds up getting about seven there on first down. They'll operate from the 32 yard line here, second and three. Brings up second and three. At the from the shotgun, it's Cousins. And that's taken in, it's BC Johnson. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Complete to BC Johnson. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders. Hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Seven yards, the pick up there. With these run pass options, we often talk about a good quarterback and running back. Well, having a talented wide receiver helps also. Yeah, even coming in third in the discussion, sometimes it. Looking for Thielen, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Kenny Moore. And the return this time will go out to the 42 yard line. Intercepted. The Colts take over first and 10 at the 42 yard line. They'll throw on first down with Eason. Going right side here, and that's complete. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. Give him nine there on the first down completion. It's a gain of nine. Brings up second and a yard. First carry now for the former Badger, Jonathan Taylor. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's no gain on the play, and they'll remain a few inches shy of a first with third down looming. From the gun on third down, Eason looking middle, and that's complete. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Give the Colts 13 yards and a first down. Here's Taylor. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Back at the 22-yard line. Eason going to throw it out of the shotgun. Escaping the pressure right. He gets this into the hands of Taylor. It'll be a gain of four, and that's going to lead to a third down. From the gun is Eason. This Minnesota D up to the task on the third down pass play. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. I have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. In the end, the opening drive, Charles does yield points. Maybe not the touchdown that they wanted, though. They have a bottom line. They wanted to get something out of that drive, and they did that. Three points, they won't turn that down at all. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. At their own 25-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, only gave up three points off of that, so it shouldn't be a difficult hole to overcome. It really... He's got daylight! He's at the 40! Pass the 20! Touchdown, Vikings! Irv Smith Jr., his first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Vikings have taken the lead. I don't think you can get any more efficient or tidy, whatever word you want to use in that. But one play, 75 yards, end zone. Yeah, efficient, tidy, excellent words. How about explosive? 75 yards, one play. That means everyone handled their assignment, doesn't it? It doesn't just mean that the defense broke down. They really executed the way that was drawn up on the whiteboard. Big time play. 
big time result. Eason and the Colts now with a first and 10 at their own 25 yard line. From the gun, Eason. That's complete to Jonathan Taylor out of the backfield. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. They'll contain him to just four, second down. At the 29-yard line. Operating from the gun, Eason. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on, third down. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. From the gun, Eason. He'll have a first down past the 40. This one into the hands of Burton. That's good. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. First and 10 at the 40-yard line. Taylor. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Brings up second and 11 at the 39. Second down. Here's Eason. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Eason sack. Tell you what, he did not have much time there to scan the field before he was ducking and covering. Did it appear to you, as it did to me, that the defensive front won their play really quickly, meaning yeah. the guys in front of them had almost no chance to block them? They were on him in a hurry. And they do finally get him, but he takes it to the 25. It's a big conversion on third for the Colts. 48 yards. Now Eason. Oh, hit as he throws there, incomplete. He was trying to get that ball to Auden Tate, but it's going to be second down. It's now second and 10 at the 25-yard line. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. Different story this time around. We had that huge gain followed by a sizable loss here. Eason on second down. He's got Burton here. That was the eighth play of the drive, so a somewhat fitting pickup of eight yards. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. Third and seven. Operating from the gun. Eason into double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Anthony Harris. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 14 yard line. He fakes the give here and looks to throw. And this one is incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there. And it's second down. I like the thought process there. They connected on a big play, and sometimes you find the defense vulnerable. So they went for the bigger shot, went for it all on that one. This time, they were ready for it. That'll be complete to Cook. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone, following a pickup of about seven or eight. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. And he's got his tight end. That's Smith. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Nine yards. First down, Vikings. Cousins on first down. Now the hit comes, and Cousins lost the football. And the Colts pick it up. And they're already in the red zone. The 18-yard line is where they take over. First and 10, Taylor now. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. A big seam, and he might go all the way. And they will find get him but not until he's all the way down inside the 15 yard line here's a first and 10 at the 14 yard line they run the counter with cook they showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down a solid run on first down gain of seven leaves him with a second and three at the eight yard line 
Throwing on second and three. Cousins. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. Irv Smith Jr. Irv Smith Jr. With two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Vikings find a way to stretch their lead. Extra point up and good by Bailey. And that pushes the lead up to 11. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. Eason and the Colts now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. He's back to throw here to start the drive. And that will be incomplete. They couldn't hook up on what's going to be the final play of this first quarter. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Throwing again, Eason. Throw's going to be in. Complete. Pass intended for the Colts on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and ten. Now it's the backup, Rivers. He'll find Paris Campbell. That's complete. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to the 30. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. Now we've got whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. Out is Rigoberto Sanchez on fourth down to punt this thing. Oh, it's a wobbler here. Now a fair catch taken, maybe a yard or two shy of midfield. So that'll be marked down as a 19-yard punt. And the Vikings, they'll be set up well as they take over in great field position. First and 10. First down, here's the run with Cook. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. Now give him four yards there, it'll be second and six. A gain of four, it's now second and six. Cousins gives way to Cook. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. Two-yard gain on the play. From the gun, here's Cousins. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. They'll run for it. Cook. And I don't think he got there. He did not. They stop at a yard shot. Dalvin Cook turned away on fourth down. And the Colts are going to take over with a football. Now a hit, and Rivers lost the football. And the Vikings pick up the football. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. What part do they win? Empty set there. No backs in the backfield. All receivers out in the pattern. And in this situation, you know what the quarterback has to do? Act as his own blitz control. Yeah, he's got nobody else there to protect. No him. one else there to protect, which means he's got to get rid of the football and absorb the hit, but not go down and fumble the ball. Not much there, only a yard. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. To throw, Cousins. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. DeForest Buckner able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Second down and goal. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. Second down and goal, Cousins. And oh, it'll be intercepted. 
Picked off by the linebacker, Nigel Bradham. Charles, not only is that an interception, it's one when you were really knocking on the door for a touchdown inside the red zone. You're actually thinking points. No matter what, at worst, you're thinking kicking a field goal and getting three. We might look back on this in the second half and say, you remember when they didn't get points on that drive? This could cost them. And this will leave them a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. 29-yard line. A gain of nine. Brings up from the 29. Rivers. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. Good for a goal. You don't see too many pass catching fullbacks nowadays, partner. In fact, you don't see too many fullbacks, period. Good news, though. He does have decent hands, and we saw it right there on display. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one close quickly and helped force the incompletion. On the coverage. A second down throw for Rivers. And he comes back with one complete. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Rivers again. He's got a first down and then some inside the 40. And all the way down to the 25-yard line. 25 yards there on the catch and run. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now it's Hines. It's Cameron Dantzler who got him down. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground. Honed in on it and stopped him. Mark that down. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Jonathan Taylor with his first career NFL touchdown. And the Colts have got it back to a one-score game. Getting your back involved, what's the importance there in the passing game? Well, oftentimes you can create mismatches because who's going to cover him? And you get him into space, which is where he likes to operate with the ball in his hands. Oftentimes makes people miss, gets that run after the catch, and off he goes. And into the end zone. And he will make it back to the 15, and that's it. Good coverage there by the kick team. Their own 15-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And they had a nice little drive going last time. Through the interception in the red zone, costly. Bad enough to throw it anywhere, but that drives coaches insane when they're thinking about, hey, we've got a shot at points already. We're already in a spot where you're thinking you've got three on the board for sure, and to come away with nothing, that's a really tough one for them to swallow. Yeah, will they make up for it? A first down throw for Cousins. This one brought in by Jefferson. Cousins. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. A gain of five, brings up second down. Now Cook. At the 39 yard. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. Throwing is Cousins. And that will be incomplete. Normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. Now they go for it on fourth down, but that pass is knocked away and incomplete. Boy, a curious decision to go for it. Doesn't pan out, and the Colts are going to get the football in outstanding field position. Now a throw right side taken in here to start this drive. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. That one for Indianapolis, resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. First down, Rivers. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sack back at the 38. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. A reminder, coming up at halftime, we'll head to Orlando. Standing by there, Jonathan Coachman. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL in this second week of the regular season. Looking for Campbell downfield. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Mike Hughes. 
Well, they set themselves behind the chains, tried to get it all back in one play, and it backfired. Didn't it feel like a pitcher working his way into a 3-0 count, right? You're behind. What do your coaches always tell you? Get it back one pitch at a time. In this case, they tried to get it back right away, and it didn't work out. To throw on second and six, Cousins. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. I think you'd agree that looked like the right call from up here. No doubt about it. What everyone has to understand is that the officials are going to be right on the play each and every time. You may not like the call, but they're usually spot on. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Dalvin Cook is running back, the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. Second and 10. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Complete, Jefferson the target. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 12 yards there and a first down. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. They'll run on first down. Cook. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. The Vikings going to signal for their first to their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Bearing it out deep for Smith. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Normally, you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact, but in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well, incomplete. Flush to his right, and seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm, incomplete. Now it's third down. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have a look at it, third and ten. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And a throw there going to be incomplete. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. So chalk that down as an eight-play drive capped with a field goal. Yeah, as a friend of mine used to say, they were moving and grooving for a while, but they couldn't keep the momentum going enough to get a touchdown out of it. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. And you have to figure they won't just sit on the football here in the final minute. The way things have gone, they need to try to make something happen offensively. But maybe they should. Maybe they Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. So that now two consecutive drives that have ended in interceptions. You wonder if he's trying to do a little too much out there. Oh, I like where you're going with that, that maybe he's pressing it a little bit, trying to be too fine with his throws, or maybe overestimating his arm. It could be a combination of all of those things. In any event, he's got to get it figured out and in a hurry. Justin Jefferson, the rookie, his intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. Johnson was the intended receiver, but now it's third down. Third down. A chance of wasting this great starting field position. A real threat. This is third and long. Fourth down now after a loss of two. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. This from 54 yards away. And his kick is absolutely perfect. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the one-two to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. The Colts take over first and 10 at their own 27. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. The 
we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. So we have reached halftime here in an 11 point contest. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach, the Vikings have to like their position. They've got the lead. They get this football as well as we are back and underway for the second half. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. First and 10. Rivers going to bring the Colts up first and 10 at their own 26. Throwing Rivers. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. That's Anthony Barr coming in from his linebacker spot to bring him to the ground. Brings up second down. Throwing on second and long. Rivers going for the deep ball. He's got a man complete. And they finally get him down at the other 46. A big play there for Indy. And even 40 yards. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked up by the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. And he will take this all the way down to the 38-yard line. So it was a drive that had real promise here to begin the third quarter, but ultimately derailed by the INT. And that was the position you wanted to be in, coming out to start this third quarter, get a nice drive going, looking for the end zone. Possibly got a little bit too greedy right there. He was trying to find Justin Jefferson there. And now it's second down. Here's Cousins. Setting up the screen for Cook. Five yards, now it's third and five. They had great starting position to begin the drive, but now they look up at a third and five. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Cousins now to throw on first down. He gets it left side to Johnson. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. It's a gain of 16, and the Vikings have the first down as well. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Now Cousins. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Kirk Cousins with three touchdown passes now in the afternoon. And the Vikings are going to add on to their lead. Heck of a start to his season. He had two touchdowns in the opener last week. Another one here in week two. Well, I don't want to call him a touchdown machine this early, but sometimes you get locked in, you know, and you feel good about things. You get into that zone, and those touchdowns come in bunches. He may be off to that kind of a start. It's like he was shot out of a cannon. I would imagine success this early, great momentum going forward for the rest of the year. He keeps this up. They'll soon be chanting MVP anytime he touches the ball. And now here's a timeout called by the Colts on the defensive side of the ball. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. 25-yard line. Colts come to the line, ready to start their next drive. And in enemy territory last time through the interception, we'll see what they do on this drive. Can't wait to see how it alters what they decide to do in play calling. 
Do they continue to throw the ball? Do they want to lean more on the running game? It'll be an interesting sequence of plays that they've got coming up. Does it often affect the play calling with the interception? How, how much does that change what you do? I think it does depending on why the interception was thrown. Sometimes it's just a matter of the defense made a great play, so you continue to come back. But if it's on you, if the offense just doesn't have the confidence, if they're a little bit shaky, maybe try and take the pressure off and run the ball a little bit. down. It's Hines. And they go backwards here. Losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. Two yards the loss. Second and 12. Second and 12. yard line. Play action now. Rivers looking for Campbell downfield. That's incomplete. Nearly another pick. My goodness. I'm sure this isn't a novel thought, but maybe run some simpler routes instead of trying to get it all back in one shot. Defense certainly appears to be ready for him. Try and get it back little by little instead of in big chunks. On third down, Rivers. And that is incomplete. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. They're indeed going for it. It's Rivers. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. And Daniil Hunter, he's the one who gets in there and brings him down to the ground. and 10 Cousins to the right side and complete to Jefferson and he gets this one inside the 15 just a yard or two shy of the 10 a 28 yard that's good for 28 yards Vikings First down, it's Cook, and he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. Quick throw complete, and he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Justin Jefferson with his first career NFL touchdown. And the Vikings are going to widen that advantage. Here's Bailey now for the extra point. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. Makes the score Vikings 34, Colts 9. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. And last time out, went for it on fourth down, turned it over, gave him great field position, turned it to six points, so they've got to recover here, Charles. It's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events, right? The decision to go for it on fourth down, caused all of that. it caused every bit of it, but it showed confidence. Hey, I've got confidence in you guys. Go pick it up for them. Didn't happen. Also showed confidence in the defense. They didn't pick up their end of the bargain, so now they've got to come back out and start over and rebuild that confidence after the loss to start out here's second and 11 right there 54 right there right there they stay on the ground again it's Hines a very good move but for a relatively modest gain out near the 32 
He's seven yards on the carry. Make it third and four coming up. Well, you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. Rivers to throw it. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off near the 34. And they will finally bring this run back to an end, but not before he's down inside the five-yard line at the four. He had his eyes on the end zone. He got close. At least he set the offense up nicely, but he's probably mad he didn't take that one to pay dirt. I agree with you, and you know he's going to get teased because he didn't get it all the way into the end zone. But if they don't score now, if they don't get a touchdown, he won't just get teased. They'll be glaring at him. How'd you not score? Following the interception, Cousins. And the third interception thrown by Cousins. Picked up by Kenny Moore. And nothing there on the return. They've got the football, but they'll have to start this drive at their own four-yard line. The Colts take over first and ten at their own four-yard line. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? So tough because we always talk about it being a team game, and you need all 11 working well together. But every now and then, partner, you need that one guy who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things. And I think that's what they're looking for right now. Yeah, you talk about going to your playmakers. They probably need to do it. Find someone that you're used to touching the football that makes big plays and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up everyone else. Laundry on the field. This is going to be a false start on the offense. Sometimes you have to slow things down a little bit when things get heated. The cadence has to be slow and deliberate at times to make sure your team's ready to go. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Both seven to the mic. Both seven to the mic. Target, 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 target. They run with Hines. And he was very fortunate there to get out of his end zone. He maybe got back to the two-yard line. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but yeah, from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. Take it in by the tight end, Doyle. And he is out of bounds, able to get it across the 20-yard line. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. At the 23-yard line. The first down throw here for Rivers. And that'll be intercepted by the Pro Bowl safety, Harrison Smith. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. Just a little bit of a rough stretch. Six interceptions now in these last two weeks combined. I know the easy thing is to go back to mechanics, footwork, things of that nature. I'm also wondering, is he getting fooled by what he's seeing on defense? Has the scouting report changed? Are they showing him things different than what he expected? For the second week in a row, he's throwing it to the guys in the wrong color shirts. Yeah, he better figure whatever the reason is. He better figure it out. His throw caught at about the five. Touchdown, Vikings. Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson. Touchdown, His second Minnesota. touchdown of the afternoon. And the interception by the Vikings. D leads to a touchdown. Now Game Bailey to tack on the extra the point. Pointer. 
And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. 41, Colts nine. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where the coach is walking that line. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Say hello to Eric Kendricks. He gets the sack there. At the 15-yard line to try again after the sack. Rivers, and that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Smith on the coverage. They go play action. Rivers looking for Campbell downfield, and that will be incomplete. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started, and that would have been a first down. And they're going to fake it from deep in their own territory. And this is incomplete. A huge gamble, and it does not pay off. They fake the punt. It doesn't work out. And now the football is going to go over, already being placed at the 15-yard line. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. From the gun, it's a give to Cook, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. On second and 11 now, Cousins, he's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. B.C. Johnson. B.C. Johnson with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And this Viking offense is running away with this one. And a pause in the action because the booth, they see something that they want to take another peek at to find out if this was a touchdown or not. Dan Bailey lining up for the point after. They had to go to the monitor, get an extra look. That's what the technology is for. And this touchdown will count. Bailey got the extra point, and the lead will swell by one more. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. 25-yard line. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. They've got to dig down deep. I mean, they need something right now, really anything to cling on to. This offense has struggled. Partner, join me in a walk to their locker room at the half, okay? Because I think what we would have seen is an offensive coordinator and his, and his assistant coaches getting together with all their positions and coming together as a group, going over adjustments, and then the head coach coming in and just screaming. <laughs> the ball comes out, but this will fortunately wind up out of bounds. Well, obviously, you never want to fumble, but if you do, good to be towards the sideline and saves them the possession. Saves the embarrassment, saves it going down on the play sheet as a turnover, but I still think it should go to the defense, even if they don't recover it. If you give up the football, you gave up the football. Eh, uh, agree to disagree, I guess. <laughs> Can you tell what I played? Yeah, you played defense. Yeah. I'll, I'll let a, you go. I took a shot. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. He was looking that time to get it to Paris Campbell, but it'll be second down. Red, red. To throw again. Rivers, he's going to go for a big play downfield. And that'll be intercepted by the Pro Bowl safety, Harrison Smith. And this one will be returned to right around the 38-yard line. Intercepted. 
Now, Charles, whatever is going on between his ears right now, it's just not completely calculated correctly. Seven picks between last week and this week after that one. And they always say the most important part of a player is those six inches between the ears. But right now, it's all those interceptions that are going on. So whoever his trusted confidant is on the sidelines, I don't know if it's the offense coordinator, the quarterback's coach, maybe the backup quarterback, that's who he needs to get with now and get himself calm. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. A full five-yard loss that time. It's going to make second down pretty tough. Now a pass hauled in downfield. Touchdown, Vikings! Justin Jefferson, 67 yards. And the Vikings offense continues to pour it on. And this is obviously quite a performance. And most of the time when we talk about someone putting a team on their back, I think we're talking about a, a guy who runs the football. In this case, it's a guy out wide catching it, and he's done exactly that, truly leading his team right now towards victory. Three touchdown catches. He's been the headliner. The Colts take over first and 10 at their own 25 yards. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime, they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is just what you said. You've gone over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half, not too emotional. They might need to go to the emotional <laughs> side because you've got to find something, some spark somewhere. And so far, just being calm hasn't exactly worked. They need any spark at this point. The first down play, to be frank, nothing short of awful. And now they have to deal with second and very long. They run again with Hines. Oh, he's going to take this out of the back of the end zone. And that's going to be a safety. And the safety there, another mistake. And these mistakes just keep piling up. How many more can they make? They put themselves in such a massive hole now. Going to be difficult to dig out from under. Yeah, for sure they can.